Hey guys, welcome back to how to build your layout from start to finish. Today I'm going to be your cameraman and the guy explaining to you how to do your wiring. Now the last time we talked, we talked about how to wire your terminal joiners into those uh, barrier strips that we have. Now we're going to talk about how to run your bus lines. Now keep in mind, a couple of people will probably dispute the way I'm doing this uh, using the phone line the wire you can find in a phone line to do your bus lines, but keep in mind you need larger gauge wire for larger layouts. Uh, my layout's not big enough. It's about one-fourth of the size it needs to be in order to use a larger wire, so I am using this telephone wire for for uh, bus lines. Now what are bus lines? Let's go ahead and take a look here at the diagram one more time. Those are the lines that connect your barrier strips. The uh, eight post barrier, or this, yeah, those barrier strips here, and the uh, four post barrier strips here runs all the way around. Now, I've gotten a few emails about, you know, clarifying how a layout works, and I've been trying to think of a way to explain to you guys to make it easier because I didn't quite understand it myself. Think of the most basic layout you can think of, maybe just an oval, a flex track, you know, basically just a, I don't know, a very small oval flex track. If you were to wire that, you would need one wire going to the outer rail, one wire going to the inner rail. You got one one oval, and you have a, those two wires going to your rail, and the other two end of your wires are going to go to your DCC controller. So that is feeding that track, uh, and it has to have one wire per rail. So if you take that on a larger scale, what you've got is uh, one wire per rail per the amount of tracks you have, like I have two tracks, so I've got one wire per rail times two tracks, so i got four wires, and then I have to have basically ways to get that electricity spread around the, the, the layout. The DCC uh, commands need to find their way to the recipient, which is the locomotive, and it has to go through the rails. So I've had to do feeder wires so that that command can be spread out more often uh, so that the locomotive has a better chance of picking it up. And the other way uh, that those feeder wires are connected to get to back to my DCC controller is through these modules here. These, uh, these barrier strips. So those are fed in. The jumpers connect the barrier strips per positive and negative side. And then your bus lines, so what we're about to sh I'm about to show you what I did here, basically connect that, all that back in a loop to your DCC controller. So if you need to pause on this video to take a look at this, go right ahead. You got the writing down below. But let's go look at the layout and see how that interprets onto actual wire. So this is a four post barrier strip. I've got the yellow as the outer wire uh, going to the outer row. The black is the inner uh, wire going to the inner rail and what we're doing here is trying to find an easy way to do it uh, I thought yellow outside sun or something like that just something easy so you don't forget but it's pretty simple and I got that running all the way over here you gotta keep those wires separate because they're two different polarities like I said before and then I've got it running into my 8 terminal uh, per side uh, barrier strip Basically, this is going to be the outer rail. Or I'm sorry. This is going to be the outer rail because that's where the yellow is going. This is the inner rail. And then I've got the terminal joiners hooked up to the appropriate side, too. Now, the terminal joiners, somebody asked me why I didn't color code them. It's because they came that way. So you just got to keep them separate in your mind. Like I said, I've tagged some of them. Then once again, the wire is running over to the next one. And so on, all the way around. Now, those wires running in between, those are bus wires. wires. And those are what's transferring your signal. You see that blue tape down there? That's just, uh, like I mentioned before, a label keeping it straight in my mind, which one's outer rail, which one's inner rail wire, since they aren't color coded. If you do your own, you might as well color code them, make it easier on yourself. Um, also, you may notice I've got these spade connectors. Sorry, I'm having problems finding the stuff on the camera here. Spade uh, connectors going to your terminal uh, on your barrier strip, those spade connectors, all I did was solder those onto the wire, you put the wire through them, you crimp them down, and you fill the gap with solder, and that'll give you spade connectors. Why did I do that on just those? 
I did that on module to module connections. Uh, inter module, I just used the wire, but spade connectors I used in between, so when I go to take it apart, it's easier to do. So, once again, that's all the way around. Pretty simple. Now, the only uh, difference here is when we get to uh, where's that? This block. Now I've already explained this once. See all that wire? It's not as organized as I like it. Try to keep your wire organized. But what I've done here is I've had the double crossover. So I wanted to power each corner of the double crossover. So that's four corners. So once again, you're just breaking it in the inner rail and outer rail, and the inner rail of the double crossover to the inner module, and outer to the outer. You know, four times over. So that's just a little complication there, but once again, if you need clarification, you can email me or pause the video, take a closer look. Now, those are the bus lines running all the way around. We covered that, covered how to wire everything. Now for the next step, we're going to cover how to run all this wire and get it uh, sent to wires to your DCC controller. And that'll be the last step in how to wire layout. Then we'll talk about uh, basically operation, making sure it's running correctly, and eventually um, how to do the scenery and things like that. So keep an eye out for these videos. Sorry I'm a little tired, I've been working all day. Keep in mind, you don't want the positive and negative wires to ever touch each other, so if they're touching, I've seen on a couple of my wires I had to separate them so they're not touching, because that'll cause a short, and we'll be back next time to show you how to run this to your controller, and operation after that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.